hello students so i am dr ankit kumar i am md pharmacology so i hope you all are doing well and you are enjoying the journey of your preparation of various entrance examination so as i have promised you that we will be providing you more conceptual and more interactive videos so in this section we will be discussing indeed a very important topic that is antimicrobial resistance okay now this antimicrobial resistance this topic covers the part of your pharmacology microbiology psm and internal medicine so question can come from any of this subject so enjoy the video so let's learn about antimicrobial resistance so let's discuss about antimicrobial resistance so in the first section we will see that how much big problem this antimicrobial resistance has become and in the second section we will see that how does a bacteria can acquire or become resistant to an antimicrobial now if you talk about what is the burden of this disease or antimicrobial resistance it is believed that this antimicrobial resistance can amount to 10 million deaths in the year 2050 which may cost you about around 66 trillion dollars okay now if you talk about what is the prevalence remember no country will be spared and the worst performing nations will be asia region okay so asia continent and the countries and the nations comprising asia continent which is having the largest population will be the worst performing areas now if you talk about what is the leading cause of death it will become the leading cause of death it may overcome it will surpass the cancer deaths right now cancer is the leading cause of death but by the year 2000 2050 antimicrobial resistance will surpass it and it will become the leading cause of death so basic question arises that what we healthcare professionals can do to it remember what we can do remember instead of curing an infection the first thing is give stress on preventing an infection so prevention is always better than cure second thing vaccination vaccination is a greatest tool which can prevent an infection in coming future third point we must remember that we must employ more number of screening tests which could be more sensitive more specific so that we can employ a better diagnostic tool to confirm an infection most of the time without confirming an infection we injudiciously prescribe antimicrobial which is a leading cause of resistance okay and we must give antimicrobial when it is truly needed it should be given in right dose right amount and in a right choice okay so this is the burden so let's come to now the second part that is how does a bacteria can become resistant to an antimicrobial now if you talk about antimicrobial resistance it can be divided into two types either a bacteria is inherently resistant to an antimicrobial so this is known as inherent resistance okay inherent resistance or a bacteria can become resistant to an antimicrobial due to its injudicious use okay so that type of resistance is known as acquired resistance okay so the bacteria was not earlier resistant to an antimicrobial but due to chronic usage of an antimicrobial now the bacteria has acquired the resistance okay now there is a big point that this inherent resistance why it is there remember the inherent resistance in bacteria is because that the antimicrobial which is binding to a target suppose there is an antimicrobial it is going and binding to a target in a bacteria this target is not there okay the target through an antimicrobial binds to a bacteria kills a bacteria that target is not there in the bacteria so can we say that this antimicrobial will not able to kill that type of bacteria that bacteria is inherently resistant to an antimicrobial okay now the point is this inherent resistance is not a problem for us okay this is not a problem the reason is very simple why it is not a problem because for this bacteria we will not be using this antimicrobial we will be using some different antimicrobial okay so let's write certain examples of inherent resistance first like penicillin g 
Okay. Now remember, penicillin G, it binds to a enzyme known as transpeptidase enzyme, and that transpeptidase enzyme inhibit peptidoglycan, which is mainly found in gram-positive bacteria. Can we say that in gram-negative bacteria, this peptidoglycan is not present? So penicillin G will not be effective against gram-negative bacteria. Majority of the gram-negative bacteria, hence those are inherently resistant to penicillin G. So you will write gram-negative bacteria, especially Enterobacteriaceae family. Enterobacteriaceae family. Similarly, we will write metronidazole. Metronidazole is not effective against aerobic bacteria. So aerobic bacteria, you will write that they are inherently resistant to metronidazole. The reason is very simple. This metronidazole goes inside the bacteria and it forms nitric oxide. And this nitric oxide damages DNA. It damages DNA. But we know that inside an aerobic bacteria, there is an oxygen. In an aerobic bacteria, there is oxygen. This oxygen neutralizes or kills this nitric oxide. So if this oxygen competes with nitric oxide and directly neutralizes, hence in aerobic bacteria, metronidazole cannot produce an effect. Now, if you talk about the third one, that we will write aminoglycosides. Aminoglycosides, they are not effective against an opposite, we will write anaerobic bacteria. Why aminoglycosides are not effective against anaerobic bacteria? The reason is very simple that these aminoglycosides to enter into a bacteria, they require the help of oxygen pump. Now the point is in anaerobic bacteria, there is no oxygen pump. Hence this aminoglycoside cannot enter into a bacteria. Hence anaerobic bacteria are also inherently resistant to aminoglycosides. And this, remember, this inherent resistance of a bacteria to an antimicrobial is not a problem for us. We will use some different types of antimicrobial. What is a big problem? That is acquired resistance. In acquired resistance, a bacteria was earlier sensitive to an antimicrobial, but now, due to chronic use, that bacteria has acquired a resistance. And this is a very big problem for us because we have a very limited resources of antimicrobial. We are not making very new antimicrobial nowadays. Because of this reason, we are running out of options. So we will write that in acquired resistance, the resistance is developed. Resistance is developed later on. Okay. And this acquired resistance is a very big problem because we are out of options. So this acquired resistance is a great problem. So let's discuss about acquired resistance in great detail. Okay, let's make a heading, acquired resistance. Now, let's make a heading, acquired resistance. Now, if you, if we learn about acquired resistance, that how does a bacteria can become resistant to an antimicrobial later on? So we will write that this acquired resistance, we will learn two things. You have to learn two things about this acquired resistance in great detail. The first thing is, what is the mechanism by which a bacteria acquires a resistance? Okay, what is the mechanism by which a bacteria acquires a resistance? And the second point is, what is this mechanism will produce changes in the bacteria? What changes are produced inside the bacteria through which it will become resistant to an antimicrobial? So in acquired resistance, first we will see what is the mechanism. And second, second thing we will learn is what are the changes it is produced, it, uh, changes are produced inside the bacteria which will lead to acquired resistance. Now let's talk about first the mechanism of acquired resistance. Now, Remember, a bacteria can become resistance by acquisition. A bacteria becomes resistant by acquisition of a resistant gene. Okay. A bacteria becomes a resistant 
becomes resistant to an antimicrobial by acquiring a gene which will confirm a resistance and because of this reason it will produce it will produce some genetic changes it will produce certain genetic changes inside the bacteria and that genetic changes will confer resistance now let's see a basic question that how does this resistant gene is acquired by the bacteria okay how does this resistant gene is acquired by the bacteria? So this resistant gene is acquired by the bacteria in two ways. First we will write either it is due to vertical transmission of a gene. Either it is due to vertical transmission or is it, it is due to horizontal transmission. Okay. Horizontal transmission okay now let's see what is the difference vertical means we are going from up to down this means vertical and horizontal means we are going sideways you know this is what horizontal and vertical word means in vertical transmission there is a bacteria okay there is a bacteria this bacteria will give its resistant gene give its resistant gene to its progeny to its progeny so can we say that this bacteria is a father of a progeny so let's call this bacteria as paternal bacteria and when this bacteria will divide when this bacteria will divide the resistant gene which is present in the bacteria will come to the progeny so it will come to the progeny so this is how this resistant bacteria will keep on multiplying this is known as vertical transmission up to down okay now in horizontal transmission there is a bacteria okay there is a bacteria and this bacteria will acquire a gene from outside this bacteria will acquire a gene from outside okay so first let's discuss about the examples of vertical transmission so if you talk about the examples of the bacteria which have become resistant uh, with course of time they have acquired resistance are the first one we will write either it is due to spontaneous mutation we will write either it is due to spontaneous mutation Due to spontaneous mutation, this paternal bacteria has its own genes have been modified. That means its own gene have been now modified. This is known as spontaneous mutation. So it's a kind of vertical transmission. Now this spontaneous mutation could be of two types. Either this genetic change or these genes have been modified in single step. So this is known as single step mutation or it is due to multiple step mutation or it is due to multiple step mutation now in single step mutation remember a bacteria will become suddenly resistant and here the bacteria will become gradually resistant Here the bacteria will become gradually resistant. So let's write the examples of those drugs, those bacteria. The first bacteria is Entrococci or Entrococcus. Okay. The Entrococcus has become resistant to a aminoglycoside known as streptomycin. And it has become resistant through single step mutation or single step spontaneous mutation. Similarly, we will write E. coli. E. coli have become resistant to rifampicin because of this reason. And lastly, we will write tuberculosis. TB bacteria has become resistant to isoniazid and rifampicin. Now, this is a very important point that you must remember. And this type of TB bacteria which has become resistant to isoniazid plus rifampicin is also known as MDR-TB. This type of TB bacteria is known as MDR-TB. Now let's talk about the examples of multiple step mutation. 
We will write like resistance against erythromycin, chloramphenicol, and lastly tetracyclines against various bacteria are due to are due to multiple step mutation okay so this is how a uh, spontaneous mutation which occurs in cases of vertical transmission now let's come back to this horizontal transmission okay a basic question arises that sir this bacteria acquires a resistance gene from outside a basic question arises sir that from where so let's make a heading horizontal transmission okay horizontal transmission so in case of horizontal transmission a bacteria acquires a gene or a resistant gene from outside okay so let's see from where this bacteria can acquire a gene on this basis from where the bacteria is acquiring a gene this horizontal transmission can be divided into three types the first one you will write is conjugation okay second is transduction and lastly transformation transformation now what is the basic difference between conjugation transduction and transformation let's understand this point in conjugation this bacteria acquires a resistant gene from another bacteria so here the bacteria will acquire a resistant gene from another bacteria okay in transduction a bacteria will require acquire this resistant gene from a virus from a virus and transformation we will write a bacteria will acquire a gene from environment this gene or dna is lying freely in the environment from where freely in the environment suppose the bacteria which is in vicinity of this bacteria has become dead okay and its dna is lying around there this bacteria can directly uptake this resistant gene containing dna directly this is known as transformation so if i'll repeat again in conjugation bacteria acquires a gene from another bacteria in transduction a bacteria acquires a gene from a virus while in transformation a bacteria acquires a gene directly from the environment now we will write that this conjugation is the most common method of acquired resistance okay so the most common method of acquiring a resistance is conjugation and this transformation is the least common method overall of acquiring a resistance okay now let's talk about conjugation in more detail okay now in conjugation let's make a heading conjugation in conjugation as we know a bacteria is acquiring a gene from another bacteria okay now remember that in the resistant bacteria there are two sets of genes one is a very big set of gene which is also known as circular dna this contains gene and there is a very small gene which is known as plasmid plasmid okay now this resistant bacteria it is having a plasmid now how does this plasmid enters into another bacteria so this resistant bacteria it replicates its plasmid this plasmid becomes two and now this plasmid can be given to another bacteria this plasmid enters into another bacteria okay now the plasmid which is entering into a different bacteria this plasmid is also known as epizoome this plasmid which is going to another bacteria is known as epizoome 
and this plasmid contain genes which can make this bacteria resistant to an antimicrobial okay so it is sometime conjugation is also known as episomal it is known as episomal transfer of resistance okay episomal transfer of resistance because we know episome is the plasmid now this conjugation remember is also known as sexual reproduction in bacteria okay this conjugation is also known as sexual reproduction in bacteria so till now we used to believe that bacteria they divide asexually okay so we know now that bacteria among themselves can change or transfer its gene or genetic material conjugation is known as sexual trans sexual reproduction in a bacteria now let's see what are the examples of those uh, antimicrobial in which conjugation have developed for a bacteria we will write like in typhoid typhoid bacteria salmonella typhi now have become resistant to chloramphenicol and this is a classical example of through conjugation okay secondly we will write streptomycin secondly we will write streptomycin and e coli have now become resistant to streptomycin through conjugation and lastly we will write against penicillin we will write haemophilus and gonococci gonococci and haemophilus they have become resistant to penicillin through conjugation so among this list try to remember the last option that is haemophilus and gonococci have become resistant to penicillin through conjugation now let's come to the second one that is transduction that is transduction in transduction a bacteria acquires a resistant gene through a virus so this virus is carrying a resistant gene now this virus which is donating its resistant gene to a bacteria this virus is also known as bacteriophage virus okay this virus is also known as bacteriophage virus so again it's a very important line that you must remember so the virus who are entering into bacteria and giving their gene are known as bacteriophage virus now the examples of these bacteria which have become resistant resistant are staphylococcus aureus and streptococcus and streptococcus okay streptococcus and staphylococcus now let's come to the last one that is transformation in transformation as we have discussed the bacteria can directly uptake the resistant gene from the environment okay directly from the environment now the examples of transformation we will write that resistant to penicillin resistant to penicillin in cases of neisseria like neisseria meningitis neisseria gonococci and we will write pneumococci they have become resistant to penicillin through acquisition of a virus which transfer its resistant gene to into a bacteria okay now this is all about uh, the how the mechanisms how a bacteria is acquiring a resistant gene through spontaneous mutation which is known as vertical transmission or from outside that is known as horizontal transmission which was further divided into conjugation transduction and transformation now a second basic question arises that when a bacteria acquires this resistant gene what changes are produced which can make this bacteria resistant to an antimicrobial okay so the second point we will write what are the changes this resistant gene will produce so you will write changes in 
bacteria. Now, we will write a point that when this bacteria acquires this resistant gene, when this bacteria acquire this resistant gene, this gene will produce a resistant protein. This gene will produce a resistant protein. And this resistant protein will make a bacteria insensitive to that antimicrobial. So this resistant protein, let's see what are the different types of resistant protein a bacteria can form, which can make a bacteria resistant. So we will write that this resistant protein could function inside the bacteria in many ways. It can function in the bacteria in many ways. Let's say first point, this resistant protein can reduce the entry of antimicrobial. This resistant protein can reduce the entry of antimicrobial. Suppose this is a bacteria. Inside a ba in a bacteria, remember there are certain channels. These channels are known as porin channel. Through this porin channel, an antimicrobial enters into a bacteria. And these porin channels are made up of proteins. Suppose this bacteria is now forming abnormal protein. This abnormal protein is known as porin protein. So if this bacteria is forming abnormal type of porin protein, an antimicrobial cannot enter into a bacteria. Okay. And this mechanism is also known as that the drug or an antimicrobial will become impermeable. So bacteria can develop resistant to make a drug impermeable. So we will write just this point impermeable. Okay. The classical example of drug impermeability we will write is that there is a, a microbe known as trypanosoma. Trypanosoma brucei. Trypanosoma brucei, remember it causes a disease known as sleeping sickness. For this trypanosoma brucei, we use a drug milarsoprol and we use a drug pentamidine. We use a drug pentamidine. Now this trypanosoma has become resistant to milarsoprol and pentamidine. Through which mechanism? Through formation of abnormal porin channel. Okay. Now let's talk about the second mechanism of resistance. That second mechanism of resistance is known as efflux transporter. Efflux transporter. Okay. It is known as efflux transporter. Now what does it mean? Suppose this antimicrobial has now entered into the bacteria. This bacteria now has synthesized an abnormal protein. That abnormal protein function as efflux transporter. Now efflux transporter, it will hold this antimicrobial and throw this antimicrobial outside. It will throw back this antimicrobial outside a bacteria. So this is known as efflux transporter. Okay. So this is also known as, this is also known as drug efflux. So that antimicrobial will be thrown outside. The classical example of uh, the bacteria which are developing this kind of resistance, we will write is tetracyclines against tetracyclines. You'll write anti-malarials. You know various anti-malarials like chloroquine, quinine, mefloquine, etc. So against anti-malarial, anti a bacteria develops a resistance through efflux transporter. This is a very important point. And rarely by fluoroquinolones. Rarely fluoroquinolones. Okay. Now let's come to the third one that is altered target third one is known as altered target now altered target means suppose you have given an antimicrobial and this antimicrobial bind to its target and binding to its target kills a bacteria binding to its target kills a bacteria this bacteria now has formed an abnormal type of target through which an antimicrobial cannot bind. 
okay so this mechanism is also known as drug tolerant drug tolerant means that this antimicrobial will not able to bind to its target because now this target have been modified the classical example that you must remember is against we will write drug tolerant the classical example we will write is mrsa drug tolerant we will write mrsa mrsa stands for methicillin resistant staphylococcus aureus okay methicillin resistant staphylococcus aureus so this is drug tolerant we will write certain other examples of drug tolerant also so let's write certain other examples of drug tolerant so the first example we have already written is MRSA. MRSA stands for methicillin resistant staphylococcus aureus. Okay. Normally this staphylococcus aureus goes inside the bacteria and it binds to a protein known as penicillin binding protein 2A penicillin binding protein 2a now this staphylococcus aureus now is forming or synthesizing some abnormal type of penicillin binding protein 2a hence this penicillins like methicillin cannot bind to this penicillin uh, cannot bind to this staphylococcus aureus abnormal type of penicillin binding protein okay similarly the other example you will write fluoroquinolones Fluoroquinolones in a bacteria inhibit an enzyme known as DNA gyrase. Now this bacteria have started forming an abnormal type of DNA gyrase to which fluoroquinolone cannot bind. So its target has been modified. Similarly, we will write other examples like against macrolides. In macrolide, they generally bind to ribosomes of the bacteria. So those ribosomes have been modified. Okay, fourth we will write all anti-HIV drugs. Against all anti-HIV drugs, the resistance have developed due to altered target. Okay, fifth we will write albendazole. Okay, albendazole binds to microtubules of a bacteria of a helminthic, helminthic infection. So these microtubules have been modified. So this is the example of drug tolerant. Now let's come to the last mechanism that is known as enzymatic degradation. Enzymatic degradation. Now enzymatic degradation means suppose there is an antimicrobial. This antimicrobial enters into a bacteria. And when this antimicrobial enters into a bacteria, bacteria degrades this antimicrobial. It is degraded by enzymes. Agreed? So this mechanism is also known as drug destroying. This is also known as drug destroying mechanism. Okay? So enzymatic degradation occurs against the bacteria. We will write the mnemonic A b and c a for amino glycoside okay a for amino glycosides b stand for beta lectins because against beta lectins there is a formation of an enzyme beta lactamases and lastly chloramphenicol chloramphenicol okay against these three antimicrobial the bacteria have become re resistant due to formation of degrading enzyme so this is overall how the bacteria become resistant to an antimicrobial and indeed it's a very important topic and that important topic you must revise by whole heart so i hope you have understood the whole concept of antimicrobial resistance so thank you very much for listening to this video